Hello, deep fried Oreo fans. I'm Kevin Ripa, and this is my Sans 3 Minutes Max. Today, we're going to start breaking down asymmetric encryption. An asymmetric uh, uh, cryptography, basically, uh, what we're trying to do uh, in the big picture is remember, take data that we don't want anybody to know, do something with it, send it to someone else. Uh, in clear view of the enemy without them being able to see what it is. <clears throat> and asymmetric uh, encryption plays a big part uh, in this. And there's, there's four distinct possibilities or, or, or states that we could have within uh, asymmetric encryption in, in the way that, that we need to use it for what we're talking about here. So let's have a look at uh, the four different processes that we're concerned with. First of all, uh, we want to look at when we want to encrypt data to send it. So who's doing this? Well, the sender's doing it. Which keys do they have? Remember, asymmetric uh, encryption, uh, public key, private key. So uh, the sender obviously has the sender's private key and the sender's public key, but they also have the recipient's public key because everybody's got that because it's public. What is the goal? They want to make it so that only the recipient can read that message. So which key will be used to encrypt? The key associated with the recipient. Well, which key associated with the recipient does the sender have? Well, all they've got is the recipient's public key. So let's look at process number two. You want to decrypt a message to read it. Well, it's the recipient that's going to do this, and they have their public and private key, and they have the sender's <clears throat> public key. So only the recipient can read it. That's what we're trying to achieve. Which key will we use? Well, we, ha we have to use a key that only the recipient has. That's going to be the recipient's private key. What if we want to create a digital signature? We'll talk more about that later. Who's going to do this? Well, the sender is going to create that, that signature. And again, they have their public and private key and the recipient's public key. The reason that we're going to do this is to prove it came from the sender. So how do we have to do that? We have to use a key that only the sender has. That'll be the sender's private key. And the last thing we want to try to accomplish is to verify the signature that was created. Who's going to do that? The recipient. They want to prove that the person who sent it is really the person who sent it. And so they've got the their private key and public key and the sender's public key. The goal is to prove it came from the sender. How are they going to do that? They have to use a key that's associated with the sender. That's going to be the sender's public key. In the next few episodes, we're going to actually walk through these in graphics so that it makes a lot more sense than maybe it does right now. But in the meantime and in between time, that's it. Another episode of 3 Minutes Max.